Today I'll discuss something I don't usually hear in the manosphere as much as it needs to be addressed, and that's the economics of why men would choose to walk away from dating modern women and instead go their own way, because I've been watching a finance channel by Caleb Hammer where he does financial audits on his guests' finances and of course, men and women are fang up their finances beyond belief. But I started to think about the consequences of a man dating a woman who is in financial ruin and the amount of baggage he would have to take on, and I've come to the conclusion that women who don't have their finances in order must not be considered dating or marriage material. I know that disqualifies most women, which would be devastating to relationships for both men and women, but no logic justifies being in a relationship with a woman in financial ruin. You don't have to agree with me. However, I'm going to argue my point, and then you can come to your own conclusion. Now we must completely take love and lust out of the equation to make sense of everything, because what I've grown to realize is that people do stupid things in the name of love and lust that they would have never done if the emotions weren't present. For example, men and women who have been together for six months to a year will open a joint account where they'll commingle funds and give each other access to the money. In what world does it make logical sense for you and somebody else who you've only known for six months to a year to open a joint account and commingle funds? That would be dumb and irresponsible, but these are the stuff that people do. Another example would be to form a relationship with a woman you've only known for a few days to a year and trust that woman with your money, health, life, and property. How do you justify making that obviously stupid decision when you would never fully trust a random person you've only known for a day to a year with your health, life, money, and property if they're not a professional? Do you see what I mean? When we have feelings for someone, we tend to make stupid decisions that we would have never made using logic and deliberation. The late Kevin Samuels, God bless his soul, used to say something that depending on the context, never sat well with me. I heard him give people advice that a man should be willing to marry a woman within six months and I never agreed with that. Now, I get it, if you don't see a future with the woman you're with within six months, then maybe you shouldn't waste your time. However, I would never advise any man or woman to marry someone they've only known for six months to a year. I don't think that's enough time for anybody to know if their partner is right for them within six months if it's not under the guise of an arranged marriage and both families know each other well. But to marry a complete stranger and you barely know anything about them or their family is dumb, in my opinion. And don't think I'm hating on Kevin because I'm not, I just don't see how that would be a good idea when you barely know who your partner is. The reason why I'm bringing up all of these examples is to shed light on the decisions we make in the context of love to show you that people do stupid stuff when they are in love. Obviously, commingling funds with your girlfriend or proposing in a short period is too risky, and the same applies to taking on a woman with too much debt and trying to make things work. Let's look at this example to provide more context as to why it's dumb to wife up women with a ridiculous amount of debt. Let's say you want to start a business but can't do it on your own, so you decide the best course of action is to get a business partner to make the business a success. Partner 1 has little to no debt, they've proven themselves to be competent with managing money and they know how to operate a business, while Partner 2 is drowning in debt and cannot properly manage their money, but they know how to run a business similar to Partner 1. Out of Partners 1 and 2, who would make logical sense to bring on board to start the business with so you can be more confident that the business won't fail. If you said partner 2, that would explain why all of your relationships with women have failed up to this point because it makes no sense to form a business contract with someone irresponsible with money and spending. The same thing applies to dating, relationships, cohabitation, and marriage. Forming a relationship with someone who is in financial ruin is a bad decision. You'll be taking a bad deal no matter how you look at it. With that said, judging by the state of the economy and the fact that both men and mostly women are flat out broke or in steep debt, why would men choose to date these women seriously if they are in a better position or they're broke themselves? Do you see what I mean? It can explain why a good chunk of men who don't have their finances in order or have their finances in order but are smart enough to recognize that women who are in a lot of debt or not relationship material are deciding to go their own way. I'm not saying it's the main reason. Still, we all know that dating follows the economics of men and women, so when you have a bunch of women who are debt slaves because of poor financial decisions that they made, why would men still choose those women when they would have to take on their debt in a relationship? As a matter of fact, some women will expect their boyfriends or husbands to pay off their debt obligations as the primary reason they went into the relationship in the first place. And sadly, some men fall for the okey-doke and are dumb enough to pay off their girlfriend's or wife's debt, only to get dumped or divorced as their reward for freeing their woman. So again, my point is as long as we have men and women with financial baggage, dating, relationships, and marriages will continue to decline. It would be backward for men to join families with a woman who brings in more liabilities than she does assets.
Back in the day, for a man and woman to get married, either the man or the woman's family had to receive assets in the form of money, land, livestock, and so on. So it was financially beneficial for both men and women to get married depending on the culture and the period. But nowadays, we don't do that, which shows why the main reason for divorce is financial issues because we put two broke people or one broke person with someone financially responsible and try to make it work. This is what humans are doing nowadays and we're surprised that we can't make relationships work. So what are you to do with this information if you don't want to go your own way? Well, it's simple, don't date broke women, no matter what. If the woman you want has student loan debt, credit card debt, car loans, personal loans, owes people money and so on, she is automatically disregarded as a potential maid if you want to be safe. If you want to take a little risk, then make sure that she has as little debt as possible, is financially stable and paying off all of her debts. That's the best I can say because dating someone with debt will affect you in some way, shape or form. If I were dating, I would never choose a woman with little debt or drowning in debt. I don't care how good she looks, how tight that wet vice grip is or how well she treats me. It's either no debt or no relationship. You guys have to be serious about this life because taking on debt weight will severely hamper you or ruin you financially. I know you guys won't want to listen or take what I'm saying seriously, but trust me, you do not want a girlfriend or wife that doesn't know how to manage money because these women tend to be parasites and leeches. What about checking a woman's credit score? That score will tell you everything you need to know about the woman's spending habits and their relation to debt. If I were dating, I would want to know the credit scores of the woman I'm planning to have in my life, so don't you guys think it's important to find out your girl's credit score before deciding to commit? I think it's very important because if she has bad credit, that tells you all you need to know without knowing how bad her debts are. If I see a credit score from 300 to 630, she has no chance of a relationship no matter what. This is how cutthroat you have to be when choosing a partner because it only takes one to destroy your entire life. I highly recommend that you inquire about their credit scores before ever thinking about a commitment or cohabitation. I'm dead serious guys, do not move forward with a woman without knowing her credit score. If it's terrible, run the other way. With that said, I know the rest of you guys who are dead set on staying free will not slip up and go back to the plantation, so I'm not worried about any of you. All the guys who decided to walk away from dating and go their own way, you'll be alright. None of you will have to deal with women's BS, you won't have to worry that a woman will ruin your finances and you won't have any dead weight holding you back financially. That's how much easier your life will be just because you're not messing with women seriously and you just have yourself to take care of. Since I stopped dealing with women, I haven't argued with anyone, I wake up to peace and quiet every day, and my finances are decent. If I want to eat some steak, I can do so, if I want to go and chill with friends, I can do what I want, and if I want to do what I want whenever I want, I have the freedom to do so. This is the power of going your own way, so if you want a less complicated life, just go your own way. But I can't tell you guys what to do, but it's clear that with how messed up women's finances are, more and more men will be forced to go their own way to avoid dead weight. On the screen is a video that will give you more reasons to go your own way, so click it right now to learn why going your own way is the best decision you will ever make.